Hey everyone, it's the week before spring break, and I thought we'd kind of slide into the break with my third and probably final class debate. If you remember, we've already done one of these about great moments in American history, and another one about the inventions of the Industrial Revolution. This time, I went through every one of the mainland countries south of the United States, and I picked one place in each one of them that I, personally, would like to visit before I die. Some of these are historically important, some of these are wonders of nature, and some I picked because I thought all of y'all would think that they were awesome. For today, all you have to do is sit back, relax, and let me introduce you to some of the wonders of our shared world. At the end, you'll get a chance to vote for which ones you'd like to see in our class debate. Ready or not, here we go. Iguazu Falls, Argentina. These aren't the tallest waterfalls in the world, but they're widely considered the world's most spectacular. The Guarani people taught that once upon a time, a god wanted to marry a beautiful human girl who tried to escape with the man she loved in a canoe. In his rage, the god sliced the river and cursed the two of them to an eternity of falling. Hollywood has noticed these falls, too. Whenever they need a spectacular-looking waterfall, half the time they pack up and go to Argentina to film here, including a James Bond movie, an Indiana Jones movie, and even Black Panther. So if you've ever wanted to go and see the waterfall where the kings of Wakanda fight, this is your stop. Next up, the Great Blue Hole in Belize. This is a natural sinkhole off the coast of Belize. As you can see, it's an almost perfect circle. In ages past, it was probably an underground cave, but as the earth shifted and the area was covered by the sea, the roof of the cave collapsed and created the spectacular wonder. It is a little more than a thousand feet across and a little more than 400 feet deep, and it's full of all sorts of beautiful marine life that lives among the beautiful coral on its walls. It's widely considered one of the top scuba diving sites in the entire world, and in 2012, the Discovery Channel named it number one on their list of most amazing places on Earth. Now, what could follow that up? How about Salar de Uyuni in Bolivia? Once upon a time, this place was a prehistoric saltwater lake. As the earth shifted, the lake was cut off from its sources of water, and as it slowly dried up, all that was left behind was a thick crust of salt spread across more than four thousand square miles. In the upper left, you can see what happens after a rain. A thin layer of water with the salt underneath turns it into a great sky mirror, so you can walk across it and look down at the sky reflected above. In the winter, the water can freeze into a perfectly pristine and smooth surface, reflecting the rose-colored hues of the sun's first tentative rays. Like Iguazu Falls, Salar de Uyuni's unearthly beauty has been used in movies, most recently in Star Wars The Last Jedi. Next on our list is Cristo Redentor, the statue of Christ the Redeemer, overlooking the city of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. This 100-foot-tall statue of Jesus stands on a mountaintop overlooking Brazil's largest city and is visible from just about every corner of the city and even from the nearby forests. It's lit up at night by powerful floodlights, sometimes in pure white light, sometimes with special colors that hold a deeper meaning. The lit-up picture here shows it lit with the colors of the French flag, following a terrorist attack on the city of Paris to show Brazil's unity with the people of Paris's suffering. Thousands of visitors come every day, either climbing the mountain itself or riding up in a train car. This is one of the more modern wonders that we're looking at. It was built a little less than 90 years ago. If you'd like to see something a little more ancient, Easter Island in the country of Chile has you covered, with statues so cool 
They now have their own emoji. This island was settled by the Polynesian people, who originally made it to the island by crossing the world's largest ocean in canoes. Polynesian navigators managed to explore and understand most of the Pacific Ocean using techniques such as measuring the stars with their hands, feeling water currents, and following bird patterns to travel between islands thousands of miles apart. Easter Island, the farthest the Polynesians ever got, was particularly famous for these statues called Moai. There is much about these statues we don't know or understand today. For one thing, although they are often talked about as if they are only statues of heads, they also include bodies that were typically buried in the ground once they were moved into position. Even how they were moved into position is the mystery. The statues could weigh more than 80 tons. That's more than 16,000 pounds. And none of the statues sit in the places where they were originally carved. How people managed to move something that heavy without machinery or even animal power remains a mystery. For something a little less mysterious, we'll move on to the Salt Cathedral of Zipakira. So, salt isn't something we think about as being valuable these days. You can get a full-size supply of it at HEB for less than a dollar. The thing is, though, humans require salt to survive, and in ancient times, salt was often literally worth its weight in gold. This that you're looking at right now was a functioning salt mine until modern techniques made mining the salt here no longer worth the money. Around the time the mine ceased operations, the Catholic Church was looking for a new place to build a church in the area, and they figured out it would actually be cheaper to buy this abandoned salt mine and convert it into a church than it would be able to build a brand new church. So, this is a 100% real functioning church that people go to every Sunday, where the walls, the floors, the altar table, and even that giant cross are all made out of salt. The entire church is lit up with different colors at different times to match the seasons of the liturgical year. I mostly chose pictures of it lit up in blue, but I also gave you one lit up in green so you can see the difference. Underneath the green picture, you can also see a carving of the famous painting of God reaching out and creating Adam. Moving on to something carved out by nature, this is the Arenal Volcano of Costa Rica. It is one of the most active volcanoes in the world, and it actually went through a 52-year-long eruptive period, starting with a surprise eruption in 1968, continuing all the way to 2010. The near-constant eruptions have left the soil rich and vibrant, and it stands in the middle of a national park full of lush vegetation. Scientists constantly monitor the volcanic activity in the area, and it's a popular tourist destination for those who like to see the steam and volcanic gases which still billow out of the fumaroles at its peak. Moving to natural wonders of a somewhat different kind, we have the Galapagos Islands, home to some of the most incredible animal species ever recorded. The pictures I put up here barely scratch the surface of the Galapagos' natural wonders. Huge swimming iguanas, dolphins, sea lions resting on park benches, warm water penguins who live right on the equator, and even the largest species of tortoises in the world. You can see those tortoises in the picture settling an argument by seeing which one of them can stretch their neck out the highest. Each of the different islands in the Galapagos archipelago can have animal species different from even the other islands that are right next to each other, and it was by observing and cataloging differences in the beak shapes of various birds on these islands that Charles Darwin first developed the theory of evolution. Now, we will head north to El Salvador 
and the ancient Maya ruins of Tazumal. Tazumal was part of the ancient city of Chalchuapa, and most of the structures in it are more than 1,500 years old. We'll be studying more about the Maya as we go through this unit, such as their absolutely brilliant calendar and knowledge of future celestial events such as eclipses, and much of what we know about them now comes from the study of places like Tazumal. Tazumal also had a Mesoamerican ball court where the Maya played the oldest known sport to use a rubber ball. Keeping with the Maya theme, next we have Tikal in Guatemala. Tikal was also a site used by the Maya people, and in this case, it was a holy site, a place of worship. Many religious rituals were held here throughout the course of the Maya civilization, likely including some instances of human sacrifice. In modern times, people still come to Tikal on special days of the Maya calendar to offer prayers for world unity and an end to racism. All right, heading back towards a wonder of nature, let's go to Mount Royrama an enormous plateau in the northern part of South America. Its height, close to two miles above sea level, means it often stands above the clouds. So, for the brave few who can make the nearly vertical climb, you can stand at the edge and literally look down at the clouds below you. Because the top of the plateau is so cut off from the rest of the world, there are several plant and animal species that only exist on its 12 square mile summit. Adventurers from around the world come to attempt the climb, and a few brave souls even get back to the ground by parachuting off the side. Okay, we haven't had a really blue set of pictures since the Salt Cathedral, so... Let's see about fixing that with the island of Roatan in Honduras. Now, obviously, this island has beautiful beaches, and obviously the water is beautiful to swim through. But what if I told you that this island is actually sitting on top of a living creature? It's true. The entire island is on top of a still-living coral reef. See... Coral grows generation by generation on top of the fossilized remains of the coral that preceded it. Coral can't survive out in the air, so if the coral reef grows so large that part of it sticks above the water, well, that part will die while the rest can continue growing underwater. Over the years, wind and wave may wash little bits of sand and dirt that pile up bit by bit on the exposed top of the reef, and over many, many years, the seeds blown by the wind or carried accidentally by birds just might land in that dirt, watered by the rain, until you have an entire island that isn't connected to the seafloor, but is instead a functioning environment on top of a still-growing coral reef to which humans have added hotels for tourists to stay at. So, that's something that rose up out of the water, while the next spot is kind of the opposite. The Metropolitan Cathedral of Mexico City. This is one of the oldest and largest churches in the Americas. In fact, it's so large that it literally took longer to build this church than the United States has existed as a country. No fooling. This church took 250 years to build, and because of that, it incorporates two and a half centuries worth of different building styles into its design. As you walk through it, you can feel the weight of ages as you see designs in the Gothic, Baroque, Chirigoresque, and Neoclassical styles, and the entire thing was built on top of an even older sacred space used for worship by the Aztecs. Unfortunately, like a lot of Mexico City, the church is sinking. See, Mexico City was essentially built right on top of a filled-in lake, and as the 18 million people in and around the city pump groundwater up to drink and wash with, 
This has caused the city to sink by as much as 30 feet in some places. After having the underground underneath it shored up, the church is stable for now, but like much of the city, the sinking remains a potential issue. Okay, we've already looked at one volcano, but trust me, this second one is worth a look. The Black Hill Volcano in Nicaragua. This is a fairly young and still active volcano, which is essentially a gigantic pile of volcanic ash. The real attraction, as you've no doubt noticed, is the fact that, yes, you can literally surf down the side of this volcano. The volcanic ash here has a consistency reasonably similar to snow, so you can use what is basically a modified snowboard and surf down the slope of the volcano. Tell me the truth. How awesome would it be to be able to spend the rest of your life saying, Yeah, I've surfed down the side of an active volcano. All right. Now we have a man, a plan, a canal. Panama. This wonder may be in Panama, but it was built by the United States. The man sitting in the crane is, once again, Teddy Roosevelt, the president that the teddy bear is named after. The United States constructed this engineering marvel that connects the world's two largest oceans and creates one of the world's most important trade routes. Featuring a complicated system of stair steps called locks, the American Society of Civil Engineers declared this one of the largest and most difficult engineering projects ever undertaken. Tens of thousands of ships pass through each year as this work of American engineering genius helps us tie our world together. Now, in case you haven't noticed, I'm going alphabetically by country, and as fate would have it, our next one is also one of the seven engineering wonders of the modern world, the Itaipu Dam in Paraguay. This is a hydroelectric dam which generates so much electricity that it literally powers their entire country with extra electricity to spare for them to sell to other countries nearby. The whole dam is almost 8,000 feet long. That's more than a mile. They actually had to change the entire course of the river in order to build the dam. And when they were done, they diverted the river back onto its original course. That is an incredible work of human genius, and one I'd love to see someday. From a wonder of the water, we go to a city in the clouds. Machu Picchu, ancient city of the Inca Empire. This city atop a mountain was built around the year 1450, but then abandoned about a hundred years later and mostly forgotten about until the 20th century when it was rediscovered, sitting in the middle of the vast Andes mountain range, just waiting for its beauty to be experienced again. The stair-step looking things there were cut into the side of the mountain to be used for farming. It's called terracing. But... Given its abandoned nature, much of what the city was and what it was used for remain mysterious. I would love to get to walk among the abandoned stone buildings on the roof of the world and just wonder at it all. Next up, we've got the Amazon rainforest, the largest rainforest in the entire world. Here's a couple of random rainforest factoids. Rainforests cover less than 6% of the Earth's surface, but rainforests house more than half of the world's plant and animal species. One piece of the Amazon rainforest the size of two football fields probably contains about 400 different species of trees, whereas here in the United States, a forest of the same area probably has 20 or fewer different types of trees. Rainforest help our planet regulate its climate, and they still hold untold numbers of unstudied plant and animal species, which may help us unlock new medicines and other advances. I've never seen a rainforest with my own eyes, and I really don't want to miss my chance to do so. 
And now for something completely different. La mano de punta del este. My Spanish may not be great, but I can tell you that that means the hand of Punta del Este. Punta del Este is a resort town in Uruguay with absolutely gorgeous beaches. And because it's in the Southern Hemisphere, they have summer while those of us in the Northern Hemisphere are stuck with winter. Even so, no one was traveling to Uruguay to go to the beach since Brazil's beaches were so much more famous. To try and attract more visitors, this city had a sculpture competition. A bunch of sculptors got into a fight over who got to put their statue where in the town's pu public square, so Chilean artist Mario Irazabal went down to the beach by himself and sculpted this, which he said represented the hand of a drowning man emerging from the water. It had the effect the town wanted, and now people from around the world come here to see the statue and enjoy the amazing beaches. Now, believe it or not, we're almost done. Here's our last one. Angel Falls in Venezuela. This is the world's tallest waterfall, standing at more than 3,200 feet high. It's named after American pilot Jimmy Angel, who saw the waterfall rising up out of the jungle from his airplane. It's also the inspiration for Paradise Falls from the movie Up, though I rather doubt any birds named Kevin live up at the top. Okay, I guess we need a secret word here, so I think we'll use the name of this waterfall, Angel, with a capital A. Okay. We made it. All you need to do now is go make a quick vote on which of all of these wonders you found most wonderful, or which one or ones you would most like to visit someday. You can vote for up to eight of them. Tomorrow, we'll start off our debate properly. And until then, stay safe and stay healthy. Stay healthy.